We have a question from Tom. And Tom says this, I'm a tall lifter with poor ankle mobility. Despite my best efforts with drills and stretching, I still really find myself struggling when doing heavy double front squats. So the second he said heavy double front squats, that means he's using kettlebells. And the question is going to be unique to him, but, but listen to what I'm going to say. To compensate, I've been using a yoga wedge to elevate my heels, but I want to know your thoughts on weightlifting shoes for kettlebell training. So in one question, we have two issues. So when I first did kettlebells, I thought it was nonsense. This, they, Everyone we were expected to do them in uh, the kettlebell the certs, either barefooted, in flat sandals, in Converse All-Stars, or, and I was, I was the first person in Utah to buy a pair, Vibram Five Finger Shoes, which um, the first time you ever put those shoes on, it is eye-opening how uh, how much you've forgotten your toes. Um, God, trying to get your baby toe in there, and then, the, oh, it was a nightmare. And I thought it was just a bunch of nonsense. And uh, so I said, okay, flat shoes for kettlebells, flat shoes, you know, because you know how you get when, if I don't know if you get, gentle listener, I don't know if you get this way, but I get this way, but the more you do something, the more and more sure you are of your opinion. Even if it's wrong, you're still absolutely convinced your opinion is right. Even if you're wrong, you're right. I think I just summarized most of America right there. Um, so I thought it was silly. And then one day I was working with somebody and when they were doing the kettlebell swing, every time they hit the top, they said it was killing their lower back. But every time they hit the top and they hit it hard, you would see this kind of like, it looked like a, a bit of an earthquake in their lower back, like, it, like, like they got hit by something. And I looked down and they had those hyper big, thick, which you really shouldn't wear for running anyway. Whether the Born to Run book is true or not, most of the running guys I know have told me that yeah, we went way overboard on cushioned shoes. So the person took the shoes off, and I, and I swear it, it was like, you know, all of a sudden I got instantly taller, you know, because they were this tall with their shoes on and then this tall with them off. And we we do a set of swings and perfect. And the person looks over and goes, oh, that doesn't hurt. I mean, we're, we're, we're not talking about a thousand reps later. We're talking about three and so this is when I became convinced of the importance of wearing flat shoes. So I buy a very cheap pair of shoes off of uh, a site online named after a river who uh, rips off authors. Um, but I like basically the cheapest shoes you can find. Um, ballet slippers would be great. Uh, Converse All-Stars work really well. Uh, flat shoes work well. At certs, I used to have to look at the shoes and then tell people. Now most people show up with appropriate shoes. So, issue number one, the best shoes you can have for kettlebell work is either no shoes or the flattest shoes you can, you know, get away with. I mean, a little padding is fine as long as it's kind of consistent. And that's why, if you notice with Connie All-Stars, you, you do have some cushion, but it's all it's basically the same all the way through. Part two, though, and this is specific to you, Tom, is you ask about uh, your your lack of ankle flexibility and use using yoga wedge or um, in my gym we have we have nice the five pound plates are about that tall, so those work perfectly. Two by fours are fine too. If you need to be assisted uh, because of your ankle flexibility by adding lifts to your heels or stepping on something that lifts your heels, I think that's fine. Here's the million dollar thing, Tom. And, I, and I, I, when I do certs, or, or when I do any uh, workshop, one of the things I like to do is, uh, when we're teaching the hinge movements, I like you to put your toes and just the top of the ball of your heels on those five pound plates. And then when we teach you the squat, we put your heels on there. And what I'm trying to emphasize on this is that with the hinge, I basically want you to take your heels, uh, uh, yeah, take your ankles out of the equation. And with the squat family, I'm trying to give you free flexibility, free mobility by having you, you, you know, the elevated heel. Um, 
I think it actually helps. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to explain it as well without having two people demonstrating behind me as, as I would in a cert or a clinic or whatever. But that's, that's the important concept here. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I think it's fine that you put, you use heels. In fact, uh, I have a pair of shoes, a friend of mine, <laughs> a friend of mine bought some shoes online that were the wrong size and just kept them in a box, but they're like perfect Olympic lifting boots. They are one of those idiotic, uh, you know, uh, those shoes that are made to do a certain kind of workout at a certain kind of gym that I'm not going to give any, not going to name. The, the heels are like rocks. And I don't know how you'd ever run in them, but they're great for front squats. They're great for Olympic snatches. They're great for uh, clean and jerks. In fact, I'm thinking this weekend of wearing them in my weightlifting mate. We'll, we'll see about that. So there you go. Uh, I hope I answered your question. Um, just kind of remember there's two sides of this. So if you're swinging and snatching with kettlebells, stay flat. If you're doing the squat family, you know, go ahead and put those, use those heels. Okay. Of course, the question is, if you do the humane burpee, where you do swings followed by goblet squats, you'll have to figure out something else. But um, you seem a smart kid. You'll be able to figure that out. All right. Thank you so much.